All right. Hey, so good. And thank you again, Cynthia, Amy, and Michelle. And thank you to the dads who gave them that little moment of respite, that little moment of silence as we were able to have that great conversation. Hey, listen, I want you to grab your Bible. Sure enough, turn to the book of Luke is where we're going to be. While you're turning there, years ago, I was at a pastor's conference. I was walking through the parking lot, going into the venue, and uh, there was a car that I couldn't help but notice. It was a red Mercedes, it was like a convertible red Mercedes, and it had a personalized license plate on it. And the license plate said, blessed. It said blessed. It B-L-E-Z-Z-T, blessed. And so the owner of this car, obviously, and it was a Christian event, wanted anyone to know, everybody to know, that they were blessed, I guess, by God because they had this car. And I thought, well... Yeah, if I'd have like a $50,000 car, maybe I'd be blessed. Is that what it takes to be blessed? So what does it mean to be blessed by God? I think we throw that word around a lot. And today I want to talk about what it is uh, to be blessed by God. And really two things I want us to see as we dive into an amazing passage of Scripture. Really just two verses. But I want you to see this. God wants to bless you. Okay, we're going to talk about the blessings of God. And then secondly, God wants you to be a blessing. We talk about this a lot. We're blessed to be a blessing. So turn to the book of Luke there again. Luke chapter 11, verses 27 and 28, just two verses. Jesus is becoming more and more popular at this point. Okay, to put this in context, he's been teaching, uh, but he's getting more popular because of what he's doing as well. He's performing a lot of miracles. He's exercising demons. I mean, there's spiritual warfare going on. He's, he's calling out religious leaders and hypocrites. He even has just finished some teaching on, hey, here's what happens when you have formerly been filled up with evil influences. Here's how you can be filled up with the Spirit which will, will, will overpower uh, the evil, uh, the, the sin in our lives. And then uh, he says this. Look at what happens here. As he said these things, those things, a woman in the crowd raised her voice. Now, this was kind of bold on her part anyway to raise her voice. And Jesus was already a controversial figure. And now she's about to affirm him. So even that's pretty bold uh, in her culture to be a woman speaking out and then then speaking affirmation in front of religious leaders about Jesus. So she's a pretty bold woman here. I love that. She raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast that which, at which you nursed. But he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word and keep it. Now, now think about this. At first glance, this seems like the ultimate Jesus juke. You know, like, hey, your mom is amazing. Yeah, whatever. Uh, know the word of God and obey it. You know, it's like, what? You know, it sounds like kind of a, a non sequitur, kind of a, it doesn't follow logic until we get underneath this. I want you to see what's happening here. First, again, this woman is bold to call out in front of everybody. Your mom is amazing is basically what she's saying, or she must feel so blessed as a woman. But to understand these two verses is to understand one single word in particular. All right. And, the, and it's the first word that she offers. Look at this. The woman in the crowd raised her voice. Blessed. OK. Or blessed. I'm going to say blessed is the womb that bore you. The word here, blessed, is is mak, uh, makarios. Everybody say makarios. This will help us. All right. Good. Makarios. You can impress your friends with a Greek word. Makarios was to pronounce a blessing. In fact, we know of Macarisms. That's a real thing. Macarisms is when we bless someone. You may have heard uh, this word, I'm sure you have, with the Beatitudes where he says blessed. The word can mean happy as well or a state of happiness or peace, you know, felicity, joy. Uh, happy, blessed is someone uh, who, who does this or that. So uh, uh, a Macarius was to, was to bless someone. It's based on an observation where you see how uh, a certain way of being in the world produces flourishing and joy, okay, in life. So, so Macarisms, they're widespread still in the Middle East, uh, even outside of, Ju of Judaism. And I was thinking about this this week. We ought to be, as Christians, those who bless others more than anybody. And I started thinking about my own life. People who've blessed me, yes, my mom and other people in my life, and my dad throughout my life, blessing me. And I thought about the power of parents and moms today and dads, how we can bless our children. 
Blessing others is to call out spiritual gifts, Christ-like qualities you see in them. You are blessed because of this. And when we speak over someone, I was thinking about friends of mine uh, in my life, longtime friends or friends in our church, who every time I'm around them, they speak value into my life. And I leave going, man, I'm inspired. I'm encouraged. And I want to be that kind of person. We can bless each other. That's what this means. And when someone identifies certain qualities in you, they're calling those out. And so this woman is saying, your mom is blessed to have you such an awesome son. That's basically what she's saying. Now, this word is connected to a Hebrew word. The word is asre, and and it's a description of a person who's living in the Old Testament, living according to the covenant, someone who's following after the will of God. Now, this blessing was often then uh, for a woman. This is why she's doing this, to have many children. We kind of see that, you know, a blessing for a woman to have fertility, prosperity, posterity. And so it would literally be a blessing of, kind of strange to us, but like blessing of a body part. I mean, like a blessing of a womb. That's what she's kind of saying. A woman to have more children. Like your womb is blessed to have this kind of son. You know, it's like a proud mom. Somebody says, your kids are amazing. You ought to have more kids. You know, uh, it, it's, it's a blessing to children and to their children. Often it was a blessing of generation upon generation for your children and their children for generations. It's like in Proverbs 20. Uh, Proverbs 20, verse 7. The righteous who walks in in his integrity, blessed are his children after him. You see, those who come after him are going to be blessed because he's following the way of the Lord. So the word is described to use, you know, blessing to generation to generation. We see the same word with the famous uh, P31 woman. Okay, the Proverbs 31 woman, where it says her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Okay, so here's what, here's what you can do. Just, I want you to right now, you can just stand up, just rise up and call mom blessed. If mom's in the room there, you can just rise up. Dad, call, rise up and praise her and just say, you are blessed, mom. We're blessed to be your children. All right. Okay, you can sit back down. But don't miss this. Here's what the woman's doing. The woman is not pronouncing a, a divine blessing on Mary so much as she's basically saying, your mom, your mother must be so proud. You know, some of us, maybe you've heard that, felt really good about yourself. She must be the most flourishing, most put together, happiest, most shalom woman on the planet. That's what she's saying here. She's basically saying this woman is who is your mother. uh, She must have all the fulfillment and all the happiness that life can possibly bring because she's your mother. And then Jesus, watch this, emphatically corrects her. He says, uh, more than that is another way to translate this. He says there, verse 28, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And again, at first glance, this seems kind of shocking, but this, there's an incredible truth, big time truth for all of us and especially women today. See, most of us think that having a child, uh, is the pinnacle of human flourishing for women. Uh, and even in, I'd, I'd argue, mostly in Christian circles, we do this. Like, like if you have, if you're a mom or a woman and you have children, you are especially blessed, right? Or, or, or we we tend to think that that maybe we're we're not as blessed if we don't have. We do this with marriage too, don't we? Sometimes we make an idol out of being a parent or being or being married, and 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 as if a single person is not on equal footing before the cross, equally blessed. And this is what Jesus is saying. You see, we think that that the greater success that you have as a woman is to have a family, have all these children. And Jesus straight up corrects this as wrong. He says there's a greater blessing. That's what's going on here. So what sounds like another Jesus juke is actually a strong rebuttal pointing to a greater truth. He says, no, no, no. There's something much greater than being a mom. And this is for all of our women today. This is powerful. It's for all of us. There's something greater, greater than being a mom, greater than being a dad, greater than being married. There's something greater than being single or being successful, being intelligent, athletic, popular, powerful. There's something greater. And this is what he's saying. This is what it is to know God, his word 
and obey it. To know God and obey Him. See, to hear the Word of God and to keep it, to know His will and actually follow it and follow Him is success. So rather than deflecting this compliment, what he's doing is he's amplifying it. In fact, maybe ironically, it's precisely why his mom was blessed. You know, that Mary was obedient to the will of God. In fact, in Luke 8, this is interesting, we see uh, a time when some people came around Jesus and said, hey, your mom and your, your, your brothers are outside. You know, they're, they're here. And he says, uh, my mother and my brothers are those who know the word of God and do it. It's like, it's like you're saying, anybody who knows the word of God and does it, that's my mom. And it's kind of, it sounds kind of strange, but he's saying, those are the people who are with me. Uh, so Mary, of course, his mother, was blessed. In fact, she knew she was blessed. It says in Luke 1, 48, right there, right before the, the Christmas story, while she's pregnant now, it's the Magnificat, we call it. Um, it says, uh, hey, I, you've looked upon your humble servant, Mary, for behold, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. And she's right. That's what this woman is doing. See, you can admire Mary, but Jesus says, no, emulate her. Know the will of God and do it is what he's saying. So now, obviously, you have to know the will of God to do it. And that's a problem for many of us. The reason many of us are missing the, the makarios, the reason we're missing his blessing is because we don't know his word. You've got to be in his word. See, you may think, well, God has, uh, he's blessed me. And, and many of us feel so blessed today. Many moms feel blessed. And, and you're thinking, I, I'm so blessed today. I, I'm, I am good. As if God doesn't have more of a blessing for you. Like this is good as it gets. No, it's not. I'm here to tell you today and to challenge you today that God has more blessings. He always has greater and more blessings for you. Do you want to be blessed by him? How can I receive his blessing? Well, here it is. His next blessing is as close as your next act of obedience. That's what Jesus is saying here. The problem of many of us is we're stuck in blessings of the past. And if he blessed me once, then that's enough. See, many of, us, many of us have a bias toward the past and we focus on blessings of the past. It's why I've, I've been so focused in these days on, on the present reality. Many are talking about the new normal, right? And, and living in the present, God, what do you have for us? Because the old is gone, many are saying, and the new has come. I believe this. So I've been drawn to Isaiah 43, verse 19. I've taught it on a couple of occasions where he says, Behold, this is God speaking through Isaiah. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do, do you not perceive it? Don't you sense it? He's doing a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He's going to make a way in the desert, streams in the wasteland. He's making a way and he's doing that even now. He's forging a way for us. But we hear this verse and, and, you know, he's doing a new thing. Now, I talk to a lot of people and go, yes, we get kind of excited. But then I talk to others. I mean, if we're honest, some of us are like, no, I, I don't want a new thing. I, I want the old thing. I like the old thing. He moved mightily. I want him to do that again. And if we listen to God and we're in his word, we'll hear him say, I'm doing a new thing. That was the old thing. In fact, this very passage points us to Jesus ultimately. But here's what's interesting. The verses just prior to that, that verse in verse 19, chapter 43 of Isaiah, just prior to that, uh, he's been walking through, telling them, reminding them of what God has done. He's been faithful in the past. And in fact, he points to the greatest moment of salvation in the Israelites' history. You know what it was? It was the Exodus. He points back to the Red Sea and he says, I've been faithful. Look at what I've done. And then he says this in verse 18. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. It's like, what? Forget the greatest thing you've ever done? Are you kidding me? He, and he Why would we do this? Forget the greatest miracle he's ever done in my life? You just forget the old thing? Those are old things. And why would he tell us to do this? He tells us why. Verse 19, I'm doing a new thing. You see, God is always up to a new thing. Why settle for what God has done in the past when he's got something new and greater to do in the present? 
You see, the greatest blessings in life are when we know God's word and we obey it. That leads to great blessing. You see, children, uh, I would challenge you today. Obey your parents. Okay, that's they're the conduit of blessing from God to you. And so when we obey mom, we're blessed, particularly if your mom loves the Lord. We obey our parents and we're loved. You see, many of us are missing out on the blessing children because we're not obeying our parents. God's blessing comes through our parents. But I want you to see this. The first barrier to blessing is a lack of knowledge. Jesus says you've got to know the word and do it, right? So I want to challenge you. Are you in the word? Really, are you in his word to learn more and more of his word? Are you in a connect group with others learning how to to follow his word? If you don't know it, you can't follow it, right? You can join us in the book of Mark. We're walking through just real simply every morning or whenever you have a moment, read some of the book of Mark. You can see on our website where we are. Join in. Just just be in his word. Continue to learn and to grow. I'm learning as I'm walking through the book of Mark right now. But watch this. The most common barrier to blessing is unbelief. Now, I, I could argue or, or you could say, well, well, no, isn't it disobedience? Jesus says, you know the word and you obey it. So it'd be disobedience keeps us from the blessing. Well, I would say yes, but it's unbelief that is the barrier to blessing. Because you see, we think that our way is better Somehow we don't trust the Lord, so we don't obey Him. So if unbelief is the barrier, faith is the bridge to blessing. But just like the people of Israel, here's the problem. Many of us are like this. See, the biggest barrier to God's blessing, watch this, is His last blessing. See, you're looking for God to part the Red Sea again, just like He did last time. And and God says, I'm doing something new. See, the biggest barrier to blessing for you is to, to move on with your life and to, to just see God do a new thing. See, too often the barrier of blessing is, I just want to see, I want God to do what he did. I want to see him do that thing. And he's doing a new thing. See, God, God moves in new ways so that we don't come to think that how he did it is the way he's going to do it again. See, he'd say it like this, I think. Uh, forget, forget the method. Remember the miracle. See, we want him to enter into same method, do the same thing. He would say, forget the system. Remember the source. We want to go back to the system as if we can just punch some, you know, some buttons. God will do that thing again. We're always looking back to the past because we get confused. And, and instead of looking back and say, we want you to do that again. God says, I'm doing a new thing. Forget the method. Watch for the miracle. Uh, don't forget the miracle. And don't forget the source of the miracle. So I'd ask you today, what is your big Red Sea moment in your life? What do you look back on and say, that was the big thing that God did in my life? You know, here's the thing. I I talk to a lot of people um, and their testimony is about what God did years ago. Like, what has God done for you lately? Like this week, what has he done? Well, I don't know if he's done a whole lot. No, listen. If you're following him, if you're obeying his word, he's going to bless you. You're going to see him do miracles in your life. What was the blessing that has now become, watch this, the barrier? You see, the barrier to blessing for many of us is the last blessing. We're not looking for God to do a new thing. And we're being robbed of his blessing because of that posture. Like the woman who thought the greatest blessing was to be the mother of Jesus. She missed the new thing. Mary was the old thing. Jesus now. Right in front of her, the new thing. He is the blessing. Jesus is saying to you today, come to me. And listen, don't miss this. You have not pulled so far away, friend, that you can't continue to receive the blessing of God. I want you to know today, that your past does not eliminate you from the blessing. Now, we pay consequences for our sin. The only thing that's keeping you from blessing today is your unbelief. The barrier to your blessing is not your past. The barrier to your blessing is your unbelief. So will you turn to Him? He wants to turn your life into a miracle. He wants to take your mess 
and turn it into a miracle. Take your mess and turn it into a message, a blessing for others. See, you're blessed to be a bridge of blessing to others, to share his love with others. See, here's the thing. Again, we're blessed to be a blessing. Every privilege, every position, every possession, every promotion, every place God puts you, he's done that so that you'll be a blessing to others. I praise God for how our church has been a blessing to so many in these days. What about you? See, pointing people to the one who is the blessing is the greatest blessing of our lives. You've been blessed to be a blessing. God has always been about blessing uh, the world through his people. You go all the way back to Eve. He said, I'm going to bless you. Through you will come one that will crush the serpent. He's going to bless the world through Noah. He's going to bless the world through Abraham. I'm going to bless the nations through you. He's going to bless the world through David. Through you will come the Messiah. And then Jesus shows up and he then dies on the cross for us. The greatest blessing of all. He takes your sin upon the cross so that you can live forgiven. And and now here's the thing. Many of us think that the blessing of God has been eliminated because of our past mistakes. Listen, forget the former things. Forget the former things. God is doing a new thing. Some of us are here this morning. Listen to me right now. You're thinking, my sins have disqualified me. Satan is a liar. And some of us believe, well, I'm, I'm too old. Uh, my best is behind me. You might be 50 years old and think, my best days are behind You're 70 years old. My best days are behind me. Listen, Satan is a liar. That is not true. As long as you have breath, God wants to bless your life. Not with the old thing, but with the new thing. And God is doing a new thing in our lives in these days. He's doing a new thing in our church in these days. And some of us, again, we don't want the new thing. I like the old thing. That's familiar. I'm comfortable with the old thing. And God says, no, 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 I'm doing a new thing. Don't let your unbelief rob you of the blessing. And so God is saying, I want to bless you. I want to keep you. I want to guide you and lead you. And friend, listen, if you're here this morning, you have never received Christ. I want to ask you to take a moment right now. I want to give you a chance to receive the greatest blessing of all. Because Jesus came. uh, he, He died on the cross for your sin. His grace is greater than your sin. And then he gives us the Holy Spirit residing inside of us to have power over sin so that we can live a life of flourishing, of blessedness and be a blessing to others. That is the Christian life. So I want us to pray together and then we're going to close our time and then we have a special way that we're going to end our service. So let's pray together right now. Right where you are, if you've never received his grace, you don't know that you know that you know for sure that you have been forgiven. All you have to do by faith is say, I believe. How about I believe, but help me with my unbelief. I don't want to be a barrier. Lord, I believe my past sin, my sin in the present is not a barrier to your blessing. I receive your grace. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. I give you my life all of me to live for you and to be a blessing to others in Jesus name amen and now all of us you may have just received Christ right then and there I hope that you'll text the number that you'll see there text Jesus uh, the the name Jesus to uh, to that number and we're going to close our time in a really special way we're going to sing a song together We're going to bless each other. And I want us to just bless one another. Sing this over each other. And if you're alone, just sing it to people you love. And and I want us to wake the neighbors as we sing a song of blessing together. It's a blessing right out of Numbers chapter 6, verse 24, 25. Uh, It'll repeat along the way so that you can capture the melody and sing along. But I want us to sing a song together to bless each other the blessing of God from generation to generation. May you and your family be blessed because 
you hear the word of God and you obey it. Praise be to God. Let's sing together.